Well, okay then, the next method that we use to solve quadratic equations is complete and square. And I'll be honest, it's the student's least favorite method, but it is used later in some different things in mathematics, so let's go ahead and cover it. And I'll show you how to do it. The idea is to take a quadratic equation and turn it into a perfect square so that you can apply that square root theorem that I covered in the last uh, video. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. We have x squared minus 8x plus 10. Now the only way this can be a perfect square is if this constant um, was a certain form. It actually has to be 16 for this to be a perfect square. Now you might ask, well how do you know that, Mr. P? Well, there's a little trick you can do. And I'll go ahead and show you down here, I'll jump ahead. This middle number, negative 8, if you take half of that, you get negative 4. And then if you square it, you get 16. And so you just take half of that middle number and square it, and that tells you what you need here in order for this to be a perfect square trinomial. So, obviously, 10 is not what we need. So let's get rid of the 10. So we're going to move the constant to the other side of the equal sign. Okay, so now that we've got, now that we got rid of that 10, now we can focus on these two terms and figure out what I need to add to this side to make it a perfect square. And obviously we've already answered that question. You take half a negative 8, square it, you get 16. So I need to add 16 to this side, and I need to add 16 to this side. So I add 16 here, and then I add 16 here. So so I added 16 to the negative 10. I added 16 to the x squared minus 8x. Now see, remember, go way back when we talked about equations, properties of equations, as long as you add the same thing to both sides of the equation, then the equation's still equal. So now, let me go ahead and finish this up over here. Minus 10 plus 16 is 6. And so now I have, have this. Well, that left-hand side, remember the reason we added 16 is because that made it a perfect square. And if it's a perfect square, then all I have to do is think, okay, what's the square root of x squared? It's x. And what did I square to get 16? That's the important part. Did I square 4 or did I square negative 4? Go back up here and look. I actually squared negative 4. So that's going to be minus 4. So x minus 4 quantity squared. Actually, it's going to be whatever the sign of the middle term is, too. So that's another way to tell. But it's going to be x minus 4 quantity squared equals 6. Well, now, if you remember when we talked about the square root theorem, this is the, this is the uh, form that we want to have in order to apply the square root theorem. Because once we get that form, then we can break the equation up into x minus 4 equals minus the square root of 6 and x minus 4 equals plus the square root of 6. And then if I want to solve each of these equations, all I have to do is add 4. So if I add 4 over here, I get 4 minus the square root of 6. If I add 4 over here, I get 4 plus the square root of 6. And since these numbers are the same, you could just say 4 plus or minus the square root of 6. Now, up here, I said this was your first step, but I put a little asterisk here. That's your first step as long as the coefficient of x squared is 1. If the coefficient of x squared is 1, then that's not your first step. You actually have to figure out how to make that coefficient be a 1. And I'll show you that over here. So over here, I have 5x squared minus 8x plus 3. Now obviously this coefficient is not a 1, it's a 5. Well, remember I can divide everything in an equation by a number as long as I divide everybody, every term by the same number. So if I want to make this a 1, how about I just divide this 5x squared by 5. So I can divide 5x squared by 5 as long as I divide minus 8x by 5 and as long as I divide 3 by 5 and of course divide 0 by 5. Well, 5x squared over 5 is just x squared. Minus 8x over 5 can be written as minus 8 fifths x, and then 3 over 5 is just 3 fifths, and of course 0 divided by 5 is 0. Now, again, 
what do I need for this to be a perfect square? I need this term three-fifths. I need that term to be a, a specific, specific number, but it's not the number I need. Let me again, I'll jump ahead and I'll show you how I know. If you take half of that middle coefficient, negative eight-fifths, well, if you take half of that, you get negative four-fifths. And then when you square that, you get 16 25ths. So this number right here must be 16 25ths for this to be a perfect square of trinomy. Now, I can't just throw this number away, but I can move it to the other side. So let's move it to the other side, and we get minus 3 fifths. Okay, so that's where I'm at. Now, then I figure out, you know, technically I figure out what is it I need to add to both sides. And we've already walked through this. I need to add 16 25ths to both sides. So I take the x squared minus 8 fifths x, and I add 16 20 fifths, and I get this. And then I take the minus 3 fifths, and I add 16 20 fifths, and I get this. Now, in order to combine these two numbers, you need a common denominator, which would be 25. So I'm going to multiply 3 fifths by 5 over 5. And remember, that's a minus, so it's actually minus 3 fifths times 5 over 5. So I'm going to get minus 15 20 fifths when I do that. Now... I have minus 15 25ths plus 16 25ths, which is 1 25th. And then I have here, remember, by adding the 16 25ths, it actually magically turned this into a perfect square trinomial. So it has to be x, because x is the square root of x squared, and then whatever I squared to give this, which was minus 4 fifths, so it's x minus 4 fifths quantity squared. And so now I have it as a perfect square equal to a constant, and I can use the square root theorem. So to use the square root theorem, I say, okay, well, then if this squared equals 1 25th, then this not squared, or just x minus 4 fifths, would equal minus the square root of 1 25th, and it must equal positive the square root of 1 25th. Now, you can put that step in there if you want to, but I just did the square root of 1 25th in my head because I know if I square 1 fifth, I'll get 1 25th. So I know the square root of 1 25th is 1 fifth. So I have x minus 4 fifths equals negative 1 fifth. So to solve for x, I add 4 fifths to both sides. So basically, I'm just going to transpose the minus 4 fifths over here and make it positive. So I get x equals 4 fifths minus a fifth, which is x equal 3 fifths. So that's one of my answers. Now over here I have x minus 4 fifths equals 1 fifth, instead of not negative 1 fifth, but positive 1 fifth. So if I transpose the minus 4 fifths here, I get x equals 4 fifths plus 1 fifth, which is 5 fifths or 1. So there's your two answers there. And so, you know, again, these are not really your favorite ways to solve quadratic equations, but it is good to know um, how they work. Now we're going to get to the mother of all formulas for solving quadratic equations, and that's the quadratic formula. Now for the quadratic formula, you need to know the numbers a, b, and c of your quadratic equation, and your quadratic equation must be written in this form where all the terms are on one side and zeros on the other side to use this. And so the, the quadratic formula is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of the quantity b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's a mouthful. Now, let me just mention that this formula is actually developed by taking this generic quadratic formula and going through the completing the square process. And when they get to the end of the completing the square process, you know, instead of getting a number like we got up here, x equals 3 fifths, x equals 1, they actually get a number in terms of a, b, and c, which is this uh, quadratic formula. So let's see if we can use this quadratic formula to solve a couple of problems. Now the toughest part here is just the arithmetic, because you can easily pick off what the a, b, and the c are. Here the a is 4, b is negative 8, and c is 3. So I'm just going to plug those into this formula. 
So I have minus negative 8, so there's you have to be careful, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a, a is 4, times c, c is 3, all over 2 times a. So don't forget that. It's, it's not over 2, it's over 2 times a. Now simplify this. Minus negative 8 is 8. The radical, inside the radical, you're going to get 64. And here you're going to have minus 4 times 4, which is minus 16, times 3, which is minus 48. So you're going to have in the radical 64 minus 48. On the bottom, you're going to have 2 times 4, which is 8. And so you're going to have 8 plus or minus 64 minus 14, 16. So you're going to have 8 plus or minus the square root of 16. So you're going to have 8 plus or minus 4 over 8. Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to solve those two separately. So let's do the 8 plus 4 over 8 first. 8 plus 4 over 8 would be 12 over 8, which is 3 halves. And then let's do the 8 minus 4 over 8. 8 minus 4 over 8 would be 4 over 8, which is 1 half. And so that's the solution. You have two answers, x equals 3 halves and 1 half. Okay, pause the video and do this one if you like, but I'll walk you through it now. Um, for this particular quadratic equation, number 2, a is 2, b is also 2, and c is 5. So when I plug into this formula up here, I get minus b, which is minus 2, plus or minus the square root of the entire quantity, b squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, c, which is 5, times c, which is 5, all over 2 times a, which is 2. So I have 2 times 2. And then I have minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 40. Minus 4 times 2 times 5 is minus 40. Be careful if you happen to have a negative 5 here because then that sign would change to plus. So I have minus 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 over 4. And then and that's what I have here. And then the square root of negative 36 is actually 6i. So I have minus 2 plus or minus 6i over 4. So that's, let's break that up into two answers. This answer, minus 2 minus 6i over 4. That would be minus 2 over 4, which is minus a half. And that's minus 6 over 4i, which reduces to minus 3 halves i. I'm just putting it in standard form. Um, and then this one, minus 2 plus 6i over 4 is minus 2 over 4, which is minus a half, and then plus 6 over 4i, which is plus 3 halves i. And then the, finally, you can write it as x equals minus a half plus or minus 3 halves i. And that's your two answers. All right, let's wrap this up talking about the discriminant. When you go back to the quadratic formula and look inside this radical here, you see this b squared minus 4ac. That has a special name. It's called the discriminant. And if that discriminant is zero, you know you're only going to get one real solution. If that discriminant is positive, you're going to get two distinct real solutions. And if that discriminant is negative, you're going to get two distinct non-real solutions or complex solutions. So you can actually look at a quadratic equation and quickly determine the type of solutions you're going to get by looking at the discriminant. So here, if I look at b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant for this one, it would be negative 20 squared, which is 400, and then minus 4 times 4 times 25, which is minus 400. You can work that out longer if you want to. And that's going to give me 0. So I know this is only going to have one real solution. Now this one here, b squared minus 4ac would equal 121 minus 40, and that's going to be a number greater than 0, 81. So this is going to have two real solutions. And then here, the discriminant is going to be uh, a negative number. And so you're not going to get any real solutions. You'll get two complex solutions. See, because the discriminant would be negative 1 squared, which is 1, and then minus 4 times 3 times 2. Well, that would be minus 24. So you'd have negative 23 for your discriminant. So your discriminant's negative, so you're going to have no real solutions. So you can look at um, quadratic equations and use that discriminant to quickly determine if you have uh, or what type of solutions you have. The next video, I'll talk about some applications of quadratic equations.